Hey everyone and welcome to part 2 of my BGP series. So in case you have missed the first one, you can click on the link above. In the previous video, we discussed what is BGP, what is ASN and how do we configure BGP in router OS v6 and router OS v7. In today's video, we are going to be looking into IBGP and the differences that eBGP has over IBGP and why is it not that straightforward. So we are going to be looking into it and how do we overcome these problems. So let's get into today's video and understand IBGP. So IBGP as you have already guessed is internal BGP that is within the AS. But we can use OSPF or RIP or any other uh, IGP protocols. Why do we have to use IBGP? So the first and the foremost thing is IBGP is very scalable. It is not only IBGP, it is the BGP protocol which is scalable. We had discussed this in the last video also. Now IGP cannot handle a large amount of routes, whereas BGP has no problem. BGP was made to handle a large amounts of route. And as of February 17th, the number of routes in the internet are more than 910,000. So obviously we are not exchanging the full routing table between our IBGP all the times, but still uh, IBGP can handle large amount of routes which IGP protocols like OSP and RIV cannot handle because uh, they were never made to handle such big routing tables and uh, they will create problems in resources like CPU or memory. The second biggest point is custom routing. IGP uses only metrics as a method uh, for forwarding routes, uh, for installation of routes in your routing table, whereas BGP has a step-by-step -step process. Although uh, this process may lead to installation of a route which is longer than what an IGP protocol will install, which because for it, it might be suboptimal, but for BGP, uh, it will follow a step-by-step -step process and when the condition of that step-by-step -step process are met, that is when the route is installed into the routing table and the last is the path attribute so if a prefix is entering ras from one end and exiting from another router then the path attribute if we were to igp use the igp protocols the path attribute will not be maintained it will be destroyed but if we use bgp that is ibgp the path attributes will be maintained as it traverses through our network until and unless we manipulate with them in some way or the other. So IBGP has certain advantages over the IGP protocols and that is why IBGP is used even for interior gateway protocol. But IBGP come with own set of problem that is when uh, IBGP pair advertises to another IBGP pair, it will not manipulate the next hop address. If the NLRI is originating from within its uh, uh, self, that is, it has a next hop of 0.0.0.0. .0 in that case, the next hop will be changed. Otherwise, the next hop will remain what it is. Let's look at this example. Uh, in this example, uh, router 1 is connected to router 2 and router 5 is connected to router 4 and router 2 and router 4 are within the same domain of AS200. Now, where is router 3? Uh, that will come later in the picture when I'll explain you the other set of the problem. For now, let's concentrate here. So router 1 is advertising uh, 192.168.1.0 24 and router 5 is advertising 192.168.5.0.24. Now within when router 1 is connected to router 2, it's an eBGP connection. When router 4 is connected to router 5, it's again an eBGP connection. But when router 2 and router 4 are connected, they are within the same AS number. Now if you remember from my previous video, You'll remember how does BGP maintain a loop-free network? It is because of the path attribute AS path. So when the routes are advertised from router 2 to router 4, there'll be no change in the next shop address. That is when router 1 advertises the NLRI of 192.168.1.0/24, the next stop on router 1 is 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0 because it is self-originating, it is locally originating. 
when it received at router 2 the next shop becomes 172.16.12.1 which is the ip address on the link connecting between router 1 and router 2 on the router 1 side but when this is forwarded to router 4 the next shop as i said does not change in ibgp so the router 4 will receive the path as 172.16.12.1 but router 4 does not understand what is 172.16.12.1 because router 2 has not advertised the van prefix that is of 172.16.12.0 slash 30 to router 4 and the same is the problem when 192.168.5.0 is advertised by router 5 from via router 4 to router 2 and hence router 1 and router 5 do not learn their addresses and they are not able to communicate so let's look at this problem in once in gns3 and how we can overcome this problem so right now as i said if we check our ip route print and we see that 5.0 is getting received but the address is 172.16.45.2 this is the address on a router 5 side but router 2 when receiving 192.168.45.2 hasn't installed the route it is still in inactive state so it's an inactive state it cannot reach because uh, 45.2 is not known to router 2 and similar is a problem with router 4 which is receiving 1.0 but the ip address the gateway is received as 172.16.12.1 which is installed on router 1 and is of this LAN segment but router 4 does not know what is this LAN segment because we are not advertising it so this is a problem and to overcome this problem let's look at our bgp configuration so let's enter routing bgp connections uh, i am using router os v7 specifically so that you understand how to configure it in the new router os uh, router os v6 the configuration is very similar the options are very similar in router os v6 and can be replicated and i'll be putting everything in github that is the gns3 repository and the configuration for you to explore so let's look at the configuration here so this is the connection that we are right now uh, focused upon let's look at the configuration at the other end also and this is the configuration that we'll focus upon now for ibgp specific connection what we can do is we can change certain parameters uh, the namely parameter is next hop choice and we can force self we can force the bgp connection to use the outgoing interfaces ip address as the next hop ip we can force it to be changed specifically for our ibgp connection so let's change it for both the ends and see the end result then so we have changed it for router 2 now let's change it for router 4 and this is done let's go into sessions and let's see our session number so our session number is session number one uh, so let's resend the data here for address family ipv4 numbers one let's do the same thing here also let's print and let's do resend address family ipv4 for numbers one and now let's check our ip route print and now we see that we are able to resolve 192.165.0 on the 172.16.24.2 interface which is the interface that is connecting between router 2 and router 4 so by using the for self command we were able to uh, manipulate the next hop ip address for the nlri that is for the 192.165.0 prefix we were able to change the next hop address which in other case if he was on just running on ibgp mode this would not have changed because this is set of rules on rfc 4271 which defines the bgp protocol in all this was the case where there were only two routers in transit and both the routers were acting as the edge router for the customer ends but what happens if there are more than two routers 
for this case there are three routers there is another problem in ibgp and this is all because the bgp protocol was primarily made for as to as connection and not for an igp connection there were certain set of rules that were written and the problem is that the ibgp has an inability when it learns a prefix from one another igp pair it will never forward it to another igp pair so that means our route can come till route 3 but will not be forwarded anymore so to overcome this issue what we need to do is we need to create a ibgp link not be only between router 2 and router 3 and router 3 and router 4 but we need to create an ibgp link between router 2 and router 4 therefore ibgp we will need to create a full mesh network so to create this full mesh network for our IBGP, what we can do is we can create an OSPF network between router 2, router 3 and router 4, which lie within our AS. So because it lies within our AS, we have full control over them. So we can create an OSPF uh, wherein we can redistribute the uh, loopback addresses and we're using those loopback addresses. We can create a BGP link between router 2 and router 4 using a multi-hop thing. Let's see how we can do this. So let's enter router 2 and uh, let's go into the IP address and let's see what we have here. So right now we have a loopback address of 10.2.2.2. And uh, this is a similar kind of loopback addresses that we have on all of our routers. Then router 3 have 10.3.3.3 and router 4 will have 10.4.4.4. And uh, we have an interconnection uh, with the uh, router 3 uh, using Ether 3 link. Uh, so let's create an OSPF here. So let's go into routing OSPF. And let's get into the instance first. So if you are new to router OS v7, uh, this will also create a small guide for you to how to configure OSPF in the new router OS v7. Uh, but I will come out with a detailed video um, later on this. So let's start. Uh, let's create an ad and uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's create a name here. So let's name this instance as instance uh, for a v2. And uh, let's define a version, version 2 and our, our router id so our router id is 10.2.2.2 so in the new router was a v7 uh you do not have a separate ospf and ospf v3 as we had in router was v6 uh, we can just define the version uh inside the uh, routing ospf but do note that uh ipv4 will only work on version 2 and ipv6 will work on version 3 so let's create an area now and let's go and add uh, the name will be backbone uh, again there is no default area created for us in router os v7 we need to create it from scratch uh, area id will be 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 that is area 0 and instance will be instance v2 now let's go into the networks or let's get into the interface templates so now the networks has changed to interface templates and we need to add an interface template say for area backbone uh, and we need it for networks on ether 3 so either you can give ether3 here or uh, the prefix or the subnet that's it 172.16.23.0 slash 30 either one will work for you that's good let's add another area backbone and networks this time will be 10.2.2.2 now let's into router 3 and do a similar configuration here also and then into router 4 and a similar configuration there also now our ospf is established but what has also has happened is because we had advertised our uh lan segments which were connecting between router 2 and router 3 and router 3 and router 4 in our ospf network to establish the ospf connectivity uh along with our loopback addresses uh 
the now the segments are known and the routes have become enabled at both the ends so router 2 is now able to understand the prefix advertise via router 4 and router 4 has understand uh, the prefix advertise via router 2 now this will also suffice for us but we can go ahead and still build a bgp connection between router 2 and router 4 directly so that there is no problem in the future so let's go ahead and let's add a connection let's add a name to r4 this is going to be our multi hop connection so yes we want to connect and we want to listen and this is a multi hop connection so let's set it to yes our as is 200 the remote address is 10.4.4.4.4 and the remote as is 200 and the local address that we are going to use for connectivity is 10.2.2.2. So be careful why we're we using loopback addresses. So if we have a redundant links going, we don't want uh, the LAN segment if it goes down the routers to lose connectivity. So we are using our loopback addresses since they will never go down with our interfaces. And our next hop choice is going to be force self the router id is going to be 10.2.2.2 the role we are going to be playing is ibgp let's set up the same thing in router 4 also now so a uh, beach routing bgp connection add name to r2 multi now you can do this in uh, Winbox also. Uh, the commands are similar to the GUI uh, interface. So you can just go ahead and select the appropriate option in the GUI interface of the Winbox and make these settings. So connect is yes, listen is yes, and a multi hop is also yes. The AS we are using is 200. Uh, the remote address we are connecting to is 10.2.2.2 the remote AS that we are connecting to is also 200 the local address we are going to be using is 10.4.4.4 because this is router number 4 and the next hop choice is going to be for self and uh, router ID on this side is going to be 10.4.4.4 and the local uh, role that we are going to be playing is IBGP let's check if the session is up so uh, routing BGP session print and the remote session has gone up it seems let's check our routing table once more and yes the routing table has the routing table was earlier also suffice for us but now uh, this has changed so now this is coming through 10.2.2.2 and let's check the routing table on this side also ip route print and from this side uh, we are receiving the route from the loopback address uh that is 10.4.4.4 which should have been the case so this is okay we have been able to establish connection between multiple hops of IBGP routers also. But this means that this is again a skill problem. Why? Because if there are more than three routers, what happens then? Right now we made three connections because there were three routers. But what if there were four routers? Then we'll have to make six connections. So what if there were 10 routers? We'll have to make 45 sessions like this which is not possible for a small network it is okay but for a bigger network this again comes a problem so to overcome this problem we'll understand this in the next video when we'll understand what are route reflectors so please do subscribe to my channel and do let me know what did you think about today's video and do press the like button until we meet the next time goodbye